All right. Good afternoon. Uh oh. I'm going to start that over. There we go. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Tangela Morris with Life on Purpose, and we are here for our virtual workshop on anger management. What is it and how to address it? We have a special guest in the building, well, in the virtual building, uh -huh. Damon Butler, certified anger management specialist who comes with a wealth of knowledge and wisdom that will help us get where we need to be. Before we move forward, um, we'll do our formal introduction of myself and our life coach, and then we'll introduce Mr. Butler and we'll move forward. Cool. That means it's my turn then. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Life on Purpose Christian Life Coach here, Tiffany D. Wall. I am a certified Christian life coach uh, for the past six years. And um, we're in counseling. They kind of address what happened in the past to, you know, understand what's going on in your present. I am the one who helps you move on into the future. You have goals and things that you are trying to reach. You will call me, Tiffany DeWalt, Certified Christian Life Coach with Life on Purpose. Whoop, whoop. And just let me add, Tiffany is a phenomenal life coach, a Christian life coach. And <laughs> um, she really enjoys helping people get where they need to be. But she's also, she don't play no games. If you're going to come, you better come ready to work. Right, Tiffany? work let's go to work let's get She's this not gonna thing. do more work than you together <laughs> right <laughs> there we go and i'm the professional counselor licensed um for life on purpose llc um and so we actually tag team sometimes sometimes i'll provide the therapy and tiffany provides the life coaching which is a good combination for somebody to get where they need to be and then we have none other like i said earlier mr <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. I ain't got no drums. Danon Butler. Danon is a father of two beautiful daughters. He was born and raised in the ATL. He's an anger management specialist that has been assisting participants with reducing anger in and around metro area for over 13 years. And in his bio, he also forgot to add how he is just a phenomenal community advocate. He got about 13 jobs out. I think he oh got God. a uh, twin. I think he got a clone. But, you know, <laughs> uh, God has been good in his life and he lives his life giving back to other people. So I think, I hope you guys will be able to um, hear a little bit of his uh, backstory to, to before he gets started so we'll know where he's come from to where he is today. I felt yeah. like saying amen right after that. Well, before that. <laughs> I just would like to add that I know Danon probably didn't know me as a kid, but I've known of Danon since we were teenagers. I was probably like 13 years old or 14 when he was to come to the neighborhood that we lived in. And um, leadership skills is definitely one of his gifts. I put it that way. But I've seen it from the past. I see it in the present. And I know that he's about to do phenomenal things in the future as well. So I won't get into details about what the past looked like but it was definitely some leadership skills and gifts that he had that um that i recognized so come on dane and just catch us up uh <laughs> i first apologize because i had a phone call i don't know how to stop the phone calls from coming in um but yes i am an anger management specialist i have been putting in work for a couple of years now i uh, have a responsibility to my community because at one point in time i wronged my community so it's not a guilt thing but it's a it's a godly thing it's a spiritual thing it's uh Correction. reciprocity yeah reciprocity. sometimes got you got wrongs and sometimes it's just it's just putting goodness into the place that we live in this place called Earth. uh i think we have a moral responsibility so uh my way of doing it is through anger management because that's what the state recognizes that's what a lot of uh school systems recognize and it's it's our way of uh, of giving back to our community and most importantly giving back to god's people because they so dope <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely and you know one thing i i've been able to learn i mean we've been knowing dana for quite some time i think tiffany's been knowing or knowing of him or something you guys had 
you had some background. Um, but from when I came on the scene, um, and you you were kind of introducing the anger management as as a thing for people to be able to work on, some of your input was like the anger part was a door into some other areas that needed to be addressed, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah. So I know that we're talking about anger management and sometimes sometimes people think it's just a solid, let's work on the anger. But I know that there's so much more to it. And that's what I love the most about what you are able to bring is that you really get down to the root of the issue. And it's not just about the anger. You know, anger is usually the presentation. This is what I'm going to give you. This is this how I'm going to show up, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's something else underlining that's going on, and we'll get into that a little bit um, once we once we talk a little bit more about it. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, so we got an icebreaker. This is just a true or false, and what you guys do, who's on the live chat, is we got three questions, so that there means there means that means that um, we want to hear from everybody. After this, we'll have our uh, virtual prize, so then you'll be able to win a prize. But for this one, it's just for in audience engagement. And we can also, you guys, answer these questions out loud as well. We don't want to um, talk too long about them, but we just want to just kind of get our minds thinking about what we may be getting into a little bit later. So these are true, false questions. Um, the first question is, everyone gets angry. That's really a statement. Is that true or false? I think to one degree or another, yes, it's it's true. Okay. Um, I agree with Dana and it's a degree because um, I guess I like I'm more, I, it's not easy to anger me because I like to kind of be in my right mind about handling situations. And I think that, uh, yeah, to a degree that if you're not level headed about things and get angry, it can cause some other domino effects in your life. So, yeah, to a degree. I had to think back to a baby, you know, mm-hmm. have you all seen babies get angry? Yeah. Yes. I'm saying How do you baby. know it's anger? How do you know it's anger? Sometimes they cry. Tantrum. Um slap things, throw things. Yeah. <laughs> or they cry louder and harder. <laughs> yeah. 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 So there we go. So that's why I reason why I said that is because it goes back to the everyone gets angry, you know. We've all been a baby before. So we may have all seen that early on at one point, you know, somebody don't feed you or somebody don't change your diaper or you don't get that toy that you want. Or somebody takes a toy away from you. You see it pretty early on. Mm-hmm. All, right. all right. Number two, anger is a healthy emotion. True or false? Mm, true with an explanation. If you can take that anger and you can transition it or transform it into a motivator, then mm-hmm. the, it could be uh, it could be positive. Uh, like I could be possibly angry that my dr- my dad smoked crack in the in the nineties, and so that could drive me to you know create a uh, a substance abuse program. You know, so how you direct that anger, but you have to. In short, uh, I know this is true or false, but sometimes you have to take the elements of your emotional intelligence, and you know, once you hone in on those then you can direct that redirect that anger to it where it's not a it's not a fire it's a fire starter if that makes sense Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely i think it's it's definitely a fuel you something can fuel your direction and you can go in the positive way or you can go in a negative way you know it's it's to me it's an energy so to speak and i don't mean that from a um in a weird way i guess so to speak but literally it just kind of fuels a certain level of um agility or a certain level of um it could also do like anxiety it can present certain other emotions that come up you know i um i've heard it referred to as wasted emotion um uh, people use anger and it it just does not solve problems to be angry um but it's just what you do with that anger and i like what dana just said it's like a, a fire um a fire is hot it can burn it can disintegrate things but at the same time it can cook our food it can you know keep us warm and so on and so forth so i I agree with that you see that you see the picture in this um icebreaker Mm -hmm. i I chose it for two specific reasons one of course is called an icebreaker 
The second one is I've heard that anger is an iceberg. Mm. Have y'all heard that before? I have not heard that, but I can imagine um, what they may be saying. Being that, you know, icebergs are pretty deep rooted. It looks like it's on the surface, but there's something that, you know, what took down the Titanic is that the, the, that iceberg went all the way down deep into the sea. You know, I can see that. They credit it as like when, when somebody gets to the tip of the iceberg, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess with that, what set somebody off to to right. even be angry? Okay, I okay. see. Yeah, so interesting. Um, the question number three says there is an underlining emotion to anger, which is fear. Hmm, that's deep. Oh, uh, it could be. I think that there are a lot of underlying issues. Uh, I think it depends on the individual, but yeah, I could go for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely not a false statement, but there there reigns to be many true statements. I put it like that. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. Now we got our virtual prize, which is your opportunity to be able to win something. And how you win is once you answer and we acknowledge in the chat that you are the winner. Go ahead and send us your email address and we will email you separately so you can access your prize. All right, so the virtual prize. And it's gonna be real simple. It's gonna be real simple. And it was from the introduction. What title does Mr. Butler hold? I'm gonna give you a hint. C-A-M-S. C A M S. If you can get those four letters, you might just win the virtual prize. All right, y'all ready to get into it? Let's yep. get into this. <laughs> okay, so we got several questions we're going to ask you, Mr. Butler. We're going to do an interview style, but before we get into those questions, we want you want to give you an opportunity to just share specifically what an anger management specialist does. Um, how that looks on a day to day, those type of things, and what got you into it. Okay, in short, uh, an anger management specialist is an individual who has been trained and taught um, to help individuals manage their anger. Um, my curriculum and my philosophy is uh, the anger is caused by, to one degree or another, uh, ignorance. Um, mm -hmm. That a lot of times we're not exposed to certain aspects of life. We simply don't know certain things. Uh, for example, you take a child who didn't know how to tie a shoe. They'll tie that shoe in a knot. They'll stuff the shoe strings inside the shoe. And it causes frustration. And sometimes we are those children, whether it be uh, not having an understanding of uh, or a, a grip on financial literacy. We don't understand uh, why we, we've been mistreated. Uh, we don't understand where we fit in the world. So to one degree or another, um, my responsibility is to, you know, I find out about the individual. Uh, we don't do band-aids. When I say we don't do band-aids, I don't look at an individual's paperwork and try to predetermine who uh, or what that person is. Uh, we, we look eye to eye and I find out what's going on with you as an individual. And then we begin to address those issues slowly but surely. Uh, the anger management specialist also has a responsibility to to push that weight in another direction. For example, I just had a client maybe three or four days ago uh, when he came to the office. I noticed that he reeked of alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, I immediately recommend substance abuse. Uh, mm -hmm. We can't we can't even begin to alter or or manage your anger. Uh, you've got a bigger issue right now. So let's get you into a program and then then let's go from there uh that comes from you know understanding the the dynamics of you know people struggling with substance abuse or whatnot but to answer your question without talking your head off uh, most of the people who are sent to me they're sentenced to me they don't uh -huh. just don't just get up and say hey i've got anger issues it's not something that we do as a as a people as a community that's not what we do uh so unfortunately um, and fortunately, there's a there's a time that 
there's a sense of urgency because you want you don't want to you don't want to go back to jail. You want to show the judge that you're facing yourself. But uh, my responsibility is to help this person kind of assist them in shifting their paradigm. The goal is to have them look at themselves in a way in which they can say, hey, let's let's utilize the elements of anger management, whether that be just a, an extreme focus on empathy or self-awareness or uh, self-motivation. Find out what moves you, what alters you, what angers you. Let's see if we can't come up with some things that are, you know, dim the fire down. And, and in some cases, let's just stay away from those things that angry you. So. I was going to say triggers and things like that. Stay away from your triggers or learn them. So you know, okay, this is what this is. <laughs> mm -hmm. What stood out to me, you said extreme focus on empathy. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that one a little bit? But not not just empathy. Okay, so uh, a part of the curriculum for, a part of my curriculum for anger management, we utilize emotional intelligence, also known as EI. So there are five elements of emotional intelligence. Those elements mm -hmm. are empathy, self-motivation, self-awareness, motivation, did I say motivation? Uh, social skills. And I think, is that five? Am I missing one? But anyway, empathy is one of those. It's actually the first, the first element of emotional intelligence. And so what I try to do is in various situations, first textbook, then I try to get the participant to uh, come up with a real life scenario where they've actually uh, exercised empathy because let's just say you're in traffic and there's somebody in front of you driving like an old lady driving like she's 120 years old so what i just tell my participants or my clients is this hey let's pretend that she is an old lady in fact let's pretend that everybody on the road is an old lady come here you wouldn't honk your horn and you would be more empathetic to that situation also right. some accidentally step on your air force ones don't shoot the club up an old lady just stepped on your shoes so you just be as as self-resolving as, as possible. So empathy is a very strong element. A lot of people, if they can embrace just empathy, what if that was your mom? What if there was somebody you dearly cared about? Then you would treat that person differently, I think, because of propaganda and the way that the, the media casts certain people. Like, we're immediately angry. We're immediately into demon. Mm -hmm. We're immediately ready to just go from zero to 100 when, in fact, that individual is a person just like you. They're going about their day. But if you catch two people who are uh, self-indulged and self-hate, which a lot of us are, uh, we could have what the boondocks refer to as an end moment. Uh, hmm. Yeah. And so we try to resolve those uh, by way of assisting individuals because a lot of these, these skill sets are not or these elements are. I'm not introducing them to you. You already practice them. You just hadn't defined them. It's like almost like making a biscuit. And you're like, yeah, mama used to put some flour in here. Say, say, say. So what we do is the part is mama used to put some flour in and say, mama used to put in this amount of flour, this amount mm -hmm. of sugar, this amount of water. And then the next time that you're going through a situation, let's say it out loud. You know, this is a situation where I could, I could utilize this skill. And then once I bring out the fact that Hey, in that situation that you had two weeks ago, you utilized empathy. You just weren't aware of it. So now let's go into tomorrow hoping or in anticipation of using empathy so that we can resolve some of those issues. Uh, and it it works. You just have to stay on them. And But most importantly, because you're not going to be able to walk with that individual throughout life. That's why I say it's important to assist them with shifting the paradigm because you want it to become second nature. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting. So you I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me before you say that. That was good. That was really <laughs> good. I'm Thank like you. so ready for all the other 20 questions that come for you. <laughs> I, I see you over there deleting. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I I always like to see or look at it like, because um, like what you just said is those emotions, immediately you want to get angry. Immediately you want to react. And I always looked at it like, adult versions of our kid selves where there may have been um, tantrums that were never corrected properly or at all and mm -hmm. they grow they have those same tantrums and people I mean <laughs> I don't care how old you are it's, it's people that 
I mean, I used to be a bank teller and I had a lady come all the way in my window mad just because I asked her to fill out her own withdrawal slip. Oh. <laughs> you know? Just it could be something small, just little just because somebody asked them to do something that they're used to other people doing for them or just don't want to do themselves. You know. Or Tiffany, don't want also wait, that made me that made me remember that Waffle House incident too. Tiffany's supervisor tried to stab her. Wow. <laughs> Well, dang, go straight to. The <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that out because you, when you say anger, like that, that couldn't have been you. That couldn't have been a you issue. Well, let me tell you, since you brought that up, like I had, I always think about how I handled that because I just said a few minutes ago that I don't anger easily. You know, um, number one, I grew up with our mom. She worked at DFAC, so we were used to seeing young children that acted out in crazy ways and played with them and hung out with them and they went through some crazy things. So just being around people that experience crazy things and, and have crazy reactions, we've done that. But uh, this particular woman, um, very long story short, um, she, she was the manager at Waffle House and I worked there for about two months, many, many, many years ago. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, it brought another waitress up there and and these particular waitresses all the waitresses didn't put they they kind of picked on me a little bit and i'm not easily picked on either i don't get offended easily i don't get because i know that that's people's character There's something wrong with you not me you know um but anyway so she brought this particular waitress there and the, the waitress brought her two-month-old child with her and the lady basically was accusing us of um stealing out of the drawer and I was like I know I didn't steal out of the drawer and she was like well if you don't like it you can clock out and I was went ahead to go clock out <laughs> she got mad and went and got a knife uh, one of the steak knives and came back and told me that she would gut me now while this is all happening the other young lady is there with her child but my mindset is okay this has to be a be de-escalated Cause mind you, this woman went from like trying to protect me and take up for me. Now all of a sudden, she flipped the whole script and was ready to gut me now. Yeah. And that's why I say that's why I say that anger was not that she it was displaced, so to speak. You know. And, but my mindset is, I had to look at the bigger picture. This young lady has her two month old baby sitting on the floor around all of us. My first mind is, you know, this girl is against me as well. But darling, get your child. <laughs> get your yeah. baby and then I got up out of there and left you know and um and it's a longer some things happen but um I was able to leave and go and call the police or whatnot but um yeah it just went from zero to like she totally flipped the script was a totally different person went from leave that girl alone to I will gut you you know what <laughs> so definitely displaced yeah okay so, <laughs> yeah, I, I, just the idea of, you know, going from one to another, it's just, it can be a little scary, like not being scared of her, but the mindset, how easily something can set another person off, you know? Very much yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Can I you did, go over? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because I believe you're going to ask the right question. I was just going to ask for the other four elements. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, self-awareness is one of them. Self-awareness is just basically what Tiffany did. She was aware of her surroundings. She was aware, you know, some of the, that there was a sense of urgency, who were involved, the ages of the individuals involved. And she moved in a way where it kind of kept everybody safe. And that's important. A lot of us, uh, we don't have that as a, as one of our elements that we hold close. Uh, and I think that it, a lot of it is based on what we allow into our systems. Uh, if you have been up all night watching Kung Fu movies as children, when we wake up the next morning, we are black belts. We are Kung Come Fu. On. Come on. Man. We is. Yeah. We are yeah. right yeah. first. I mean, it's peace oh, I'm a dancer from watching people dance on TV. I can dance, but I call it seat dancer because if I stand up, it ain't going to look the same as what's in yeah. my head. <laughs> I, I so, thought I was past Troy at one point. You know, we ready. I knew it. I was a gangster in my head. That's how it is. Unfortunately, some of our young adults and our teens, they're consuming 
black on black crime from the moment that they wake to the moment that they go to sleep. And then mm. you add mm. a couple of people along to that. And it's like, I had a kid that was on my case load. This one I was doing uh, case management out in Clayton County. I had a program where we worked with Morehouse and some other people. And the goal was to get them placed for 90 days. But when I spoke to this guy, he actually, he responded almost with rap lyrics. I was just like, it's, wow. it's, it's in us. And as, as you ride down Calla Road, you're going you gonna to interact with a lot of people that it's not just Calla Road, anywhere where you're you're consuming death to one degree or another. And it doesn't it's, just have music. I found Calla Road a few days ago, so we know exactly what you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> it's uh, television. You can look at uh, uh, a movie with Al Pacino. If you look at six of his movies and it's all the resolutions resolve, him killing the bad guy then. You, in your mind, you want to be a good guy. You want to be a superhero, which is why most of the times on Halloween, our kids, we dress up as superheroes. We want to demolish the bad guy. Unfortunately, we don't always pinpoint the right bad guy. And if you contest something that I'm saying, if you challenge me, if mm -hmm. I'm not self-aware, then you could immediately become the bad guy, whether I'm crossing you off in traffic, I accidentally bump. In some regions of uh, Decatur, if there's too much eye contact, I am yeah. being the enemy. Uh, and we're just on guard with each other where we are that close away. We actually, if I'm being honest, we practice in the mm -hmm. mirror firearms on how we're going to shoot another black person. This is a part mm -hmm. of our uh, major corporations advertise on major radio stations right now you can turn to v103 or whatever the stations are and i promise you you will hear black people killing black people as if it's the norm when mm -hmm. it, that propaganda has come into your environment as a sheep then your skill your ability to be self-aware uh it's altered because you're constantly on the go and when you look in the mirror you see you see the enemy and you see no real resolution, but to show them that you ain't to be played with. Yeah, I wow. remember old dog on Menace to Society when he was holding his gun sideways. Everybody else began holding holding their gun sideways. Even movies and things, you started seeing the gun turn sideways in, in movies after that. But I also recognized that young ladies were very attracted to his character as well. And so it was interesting, even though it was about another young man, you know, kind of caught between a rock and a hard place of trying to do good, but kind of lost. But at the same time, trying to change his life because he's getting, you know, got somebody else in his ear saying, you know, you don't have to live like this. You can do something different. Mm -hmm. um, and But ultimately, we all made it about old dog. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is good. Um, I, I don't have to say. Hmm. Say that again. If I need to step away, well, if I need to put the camera down, how do you put your face up here? Not your face, but of your picture. Oh, your picture. Eye. His picture. Uh, I don't know if you can do it while you're on online. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, we we've been on this this message of conformity. Um, so there's a scripture that says, "Don't be." Um, don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. So we've been focusing on the conformity part and the renewing of your mind. Um, and everything you said just presented conformity. We mm -hmm. do what everybody else do, but in order to transform, you got to renew your mind. And so the alternative is to renew your mind. And so one thing I think if, if we were able to list like, okay, what are the ways to renew your mind? One of them is self-awareness. Mm hmm which is good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that Tangie because um, that makes me think about old, the old Testament talks about eye for an eye. And I think that most people in the world are always gearing up to be ready for eye for an eye versus, you know, mindset thinking about, okay, maybe this, you know, if, if we do eye for an eye, then it won't be nobody left over, you know? <laughs> and no yeah. Eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, so we have empathy. I broke down motivation, self awareness. You say you broke down motivation? I wrote it down. Okay. 
That was one of the five elements, right? Yep. You also have social skills. Okay. Social skills is important because um, you got to be able to 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 communicate. You have to understand. Sometimes I, I speak uh, in front of groups of people. And so I can't very well use the jargon that I use in front of mechanics in front of the Columbia High School chilling squad. It right. Doesn't equate. But also you have to understand the the one time I was I was in rural Georgia and I was on a 26 foot box truck and um uh, I had a guy who was visually racist and he was inquiring about why I was in his part of town. Uh me being a licensed carrier, uh, I'm capable of standing my ground, but I also understand that it's important that I make it home. That's right. And I'm not trying to convert you. We're not about to have a Martin Luther King moment. What I'm about to do is I'm about to appease you until I get away from here, and then I'll listen to Public Enemy on the way home. Um, <laughs> so in, in that aspect, I, I utilize my social skills because what I said to him at one mm -hmm. point in, time, mm -hmm. in a driveway and he pulled in front of me where I had nowhere to go. And so uh, I didn't hit my fight or flight button. I just mm -hmm. kind of pointed out some things to him because as I'm listening to your Southern Eastern dialect, there's a, there's a pinch of English in there. So I know that you understand what I'm about to say to you. And I wasn't all in his face. I was like, well, he was like, I'll call the police on you because you're not supposed to be in this part of such and such, such and such. I was like, okay, I don't have a problem with you calling the police. But also let me point out to you that you are prohibiting my vehicle from leaving, which in the state of Georgia is actually documented as kidnapping. Mm -hmm. So, so let's, let's well, also, if you call the police, what's going to take place is you're going to go, you're going to go to jail in handcuffs. And I do have you on camera. And sir, I don't want to, I don't want you to go to jail. And I think this is just a misunderstanding. So I, I went into tap dance mode and I call it tap dance mode because I have the right to do whatever it is that I, cause right now you are, you're stopping me from doing, but that's not what my issue is. That's not what my goal is. My goal is to, is to go home and to finish what it is I got going on. So uh, I have to be able to communicate in a way that is receivable, that's understandable, but even within that, even within utilizing those social skills, I also have to I have to tap in a, a a dash of empathy because I have to understand that you and your wife probably cousins, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's not, that's neither here nor there. But what I want to say is, you know, you hadn't even seen my kind out here in a while, like uh, unless we're on TV, uh, running the football or shooting the basketball, and yeah. again trying to change that i just want to make it away from here so let me speak a language that most people do understand law and they understand that okay what they don't want you don't really want to break the law uh mm -hmm. so but again those are social skills but you have to you have to use those elements interchangeably you got to understand what's going on but see when i go into a situation i've been listening to something on the way out here that my spirit is in a totally different place and i know we're talking about anger management but from a, a, a spiritual aspect, I fill my spirit up with so much positivity and so much mm -hmm. motive. When you come at me negatively, I am, I'm going to give you positives. Thus, mm -hmm. when you ask me how I'm doing, I don't care who you are, what your race is, if you like black people or not, it's the best day of my life. And people are just thrown away by that. They're yeah. like, well, is it your birthday? Mm -mm. So now I get an opportunity to tell you how good God is to me. Now, in mm -hmm. these environments where it's not faith-based, then I use terminology such as uh, positive reinforcement, emotional intelligence. But when it boils that down to it, it all comes from the mind. It yeah. all, it all. I don't care oh. what you put on it. So it's like if I'm looking at people kill each other all the time, then that's what's on me. But I encourage my clients and my I know you're gonna listen to it, Young Thug. I know that it's gonna take place. But between every third song, if you could just manage to just just light just a little bit. Just lighten up. And then when I have them in the car with me, uh I let I we put the ignorance on for a little bit and then I'll tune up and I'll put some righteous on. Then we'll go back to the ignorance. Man, 
it'll go from three songs of ignorance to some righteousness to two songs of ignorance. So I'm just gradually getting you to mm-hmm. it. That's and like I, ice cream versus green beans. Now eat some green beans. I'm gonna give you some ice cream, but <laughs> <laughs> and then the hope is that somewhere within it, you'll find out what righteous voice speaks to you. And then yeah. I'm having, then I'll try to have a dialogue with you in reference to what you just consumed and how it relates to you. Now, some people, are, if you don't help them listen to it, they won't listen to it. But what I try to, I do some of my assignments that way. So a lot of people won't read, but I'll send you as a man thinketh. And I'll just ask you to give me the basic, uh, the basic, storyline or the basic idea of this book in mm-hmm. hopes of because you can listen to it in 15 minutes and get the basic outline but it's my hope that something within this literature speaks to you and after we have our conversation you still want to listen to it you still want to engage in it because it's bringing something different to your life so i definitely make that a part of the assignment but that transitions to you know, understanding your your social skills and how you communicate with people. And sometimes I can't communicate with people. So I got a kid who's on my caseload who is from Mexico. And we actually got him. He's a he's a specialist. This happened years ago because there's a there's a population that we need to reach. And this is something that could potentially help them out. So as we grow, we won't be bound by any uh inability to communicate because we want to talk we want somebody who's who is on sign language something spanish some whatever but for the most part just understanding who that person is what they're accustomed to and being able to if you can speak standard english you're good but sometimes it's it's non-verbal it's non-verbal i was at the the gas station up the street and we have um how can i say it we have uh, pharmacists that are misplaced. They think that they're supposed to be outside the gas station when they're not. They're supposed to be inside the CBS with the thing on, but they want to stand <laughs> outside. So I don't want to buy that are getting I'll, certification papers. Huh? <laughs> uh, I don't want to buy your drugs. I don't want no problems with you. But what I do, I just open the door from people. How you doing, brother? Such a second. And then sometimes I give them a compliment. Man, those some nice shoes you got on there, man. I say, where you getting yeah. them shoes? So I just keep it positive, and I just I understand what my environment is and. And um, I try to put people in a different mind state. I never want to conflict with you. That's that's empathy. That's motivation. And that's uh, that's also self-awareness. But most imp- well, for this segment, it's it's uh, your social skills. It's knowing who you're dealing with and how to deal with. Them. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, right. that's good. Yeah. I can look at the situation. I, I had a situation a few months back where. You ever like there's this gas pump that I go to at the gas station I go to is I always go to that pump as long as it's available. That's the pump I go to mm-hmm. <laughs> like the park where I can just leave, get out of there if I need to, you know, and um, I met, you know, face to face. Well, basically head on with another driver like she was trying to I guess I couldn't tell she was trying to get to the pump. But basically I made it to the pump before she did. And we was face to face. And the girl just started cussing and go ahead and you can do it, you know, just cussing me out. And I was sitting there looking at the situation. You can talk all you want to. I'm hey, I'm listening. I just got to open this door real quick. I'm listening, though. I can still okay. hear you. Okay. So I just had to look at that whole situation and size up the moment on, okay, you know, can I get out of here if I need to? What kind of, am I going to have to fight this girl or what? So I'm looking, I'm like, okay, this girl, she's a little bitty something and she more chatty and then, you know, got fire about her wanting to fight or whatever. So I just started using body language. I didn't say anything to her. I just continued to look at her as I was moving. I mean, getting things out of my, my bag so I can pay for the gas. And as I got out of the car, I didn't make, you know, I'm a tall person. So for those of you online, I'm 5'10". And this girl had to be maybe 5'2", five, 5'4", five, some little tiny something. And so I was like, okay, this I can just be quiet on this situation because I know people who cuss folks out and go off, they usually have someone who responds to that behavior. But if you be quiet and don't respond, it confuses them. And mm-hmm. so 
I just looked at it. I was like, okay, she little, she doing a lot of talking. So what I did was when I got out of the car, I, I started low and I stood up real slow until I became almost six feet in her face, you know? <laughs> and I watched her the whole time as I was pumping the gas and everything and, you know, finished off my transaction, got back in the car, put my stuff away. And I always kept my eyes on her the whole time, which I think confused her and calmed her down to where she was pretending she was on the phone, FaceTiming somebody and acting like I wasn't there at this point. And mm. so, I, you know, our reactions are definitely a huge factor in uh, someone else's anger. Where, whatever their fuse is, you don't know how short that fuse is. I don't know what this girl might have wanted to do just because she didn't get that gas pump at that moment. I mean, plenty of other pumps there where she could have backed up and went to another one, but she chose to stay there. Not only did she choose to to cuss at me and all that, she chose to stay there like as if to intimidate me. But I'm like, I didn't size up this whole situation you a little tiny something. I don't think you really, you know, came to this gas station because you was ready to fight somebody. But <laughs> let's give you a little, you know, let's de-escalate some things by some visual situations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of times people have God with them. They don't even realize it because I ran into yeah. a guy that like, the Lord is with you, my child. And you don't even realize it. He's going he gonna to bless you through me. He's going to bless me. He's going to bless you. But yeah, I understand what you're saying, and yeah. it makes perfectly good sense. You have to assess the situation. Assess that situation. I'm looking at, I mean, all the way down to how fast her car is versus mine. If I got to, you know, it, it do whatever I need to do. I'm looking at that whole situation. And while you got all of these cuss words and names or whatever you want, you know, you're trying to think of that to offend me, trying to touch my spirit, I ain't even there with you. I can't get in that spirit with you because that's not who I am. You you were in there by yourself. And when I showed her that she was alone in those sentiments, that's when she calmed down and it was like, okay, maybe I need to chill out on this lady. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did we catch the last element? Well, uh, which ones have we covered so far? We talked about empathy. Um, I wrote down motivation. We hadn't talked about it. Self-awareness and social skills. Uh, Self-regulation. Okay. Is that not kind of like self-awareness? It kind of is because you're just kind of like uh, aware of uh, impulses and yeah. they kind of really all coincide because if you're aware of yourself and aware of others, you're exercising three of those elements, which is empathy, self-awareness, uh, self-regulation. If you're aware of yourself, then you clearly have to be able to regulate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They all kind of coincide. It helps when you have five things and a lot of times and what I'm learning is if you call something something else then people will learn it more than one time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. say that again I ain't okay, so that. self awareness so I'm going to read out what self awareness is self awareness is the ability to recognize and understand your moods and emotions and how mm -hmm. they are others mm -hmm. but if you're aware of how something affects other people isn't that empathy yeah, I got you. See what I'm saying? So it it's five elements, but those five elements, they they coincide um in more ways than one. But again, like if I can teach you um the importance of having your room clean and how we can also reduce diseases from moving around, you may think it's two different things, but it's all the same. It's all cleanliness. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, like self-regulation, um, but it, that can go a couple of different ways, though. Um, I say with the self-regulation -regula people, there, I, you have conversation. This is mostly with ladies. I'm, I don't know. I don't have this type of conversation with men a lot. But um, with women, they talk a lot about what sets them off. So they mm -hmm. know their They know, you know, how they would react to it and uh with self-regulating i think that um sometimes people uh, self-regulation looks differently in different people i put it that way mm -hmm. um you regulate yourself you you know you know what your your fuse is you know how short your fuse is you know how you would react if somebody did that to me you you you've heard the statement before they better than me mm -hmm. that that person was able to you know 
come out of a, a situation positively or alive <laughs> in a situation, you know, mm -hmm. but there's people that have a short regulation. They, it's just short. It's just, you know, they're, they are going to react in a way that is, it, it can go all the way to being deadly, you know, <laughs> hurting or hurting someone else. And that's just as far as they're going to go with regulating themselves, you know? Okay. Okay. I want to get to some more questions um, before we run out of time, but this was really good. This wasn't even in the plans, but when you said mm -hmm. what That's you what said, I said I, we needed this. Um, mm -hmm. So what population do you serve? Well, I have the capability to serve all populations. Unfortunately, because uh, in DeKalb County, Fulton County, um, I mostly deal with, you know, African-Americans and we have a lot of young people. Um, my specialty is at-risk adults or at-risk teens uh, because uh, I was, uh, male and female male and female okay because uh, I once was one of those knuckleheads and so it's 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 almost like if I'm going through rehab and I broke my leg uh, I don't have to talk to somebody who done broke a leg before but it kind of helps if that mm -hmm. makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Take one to know one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they're more susceptible to, you know, they'll listen to what I got going on. Not to say they won't listen to somebody else, because if you talking good stuff, then they'll pick. If I can come in and say, I, I'll shout at you to death for the first 10 minutes, and then we'll gradually, I see where you at with the shouty thing, and then we'll gradually start moving into something that's a tad bit more professional and uh, efficient and universal. But I want you to understand that, hey, I have been just as dirty as you are. And here's the way that we can get us both cleaned up. And so, yeah. So to answer your question, I deal with all populations, but my specialty is at-risk youth, African-Americans, male, female. And unfortunately, a lot of these kids have had run-ins with the law, which is how they end up on my desk. Okay. Um, did you have issues with anger? Uh, yeah, and I still do to one degree or another. Um. That just I just don't exercise. I think that uh, anytime we have embraced ignorance, then we've had anger issues. Uh, for myself, it was uh, I used to force myself to try to do certain things. Like I played in, in school, I played sports and I did certain things, but I didn't. Um, when it came to being peed off, if it was time to go, then I was I was there for it for for a long period of time and then it became part of my identity because i was i'm gonna be the crazy one and don't end up getting uh, a nickname tattooed on you then you got to live up to it every time something pop off you're like, well, it's tattooed on my arm that's what they call yeah. me so that's i got to be uh yeah. i i have the i've been blessed to the point where you know god has set me to the side and even when i'm in a bad situation he'll let me know that hey this is this is way smaller than you my boy you can do so much bigger than this. And you have the ability, you can lead people into a fire or you can lead them into an AC room. It's totally up to where you want to go. Uh, I have that blessing. I've been blessed with that. But to answer your question, uh, I I still deal with anger, but it's just on a lower level. It's like it, you won't know. It won't even be a blink of the eye because I'm already in my mind because I teach it so often. It's a part of my makeup and my daughter, I have a 26-year-old daughter who is actually preaching today. She's preaching today. Uh, so we have conversations. She was just like, you, this that your youngest child is doing, when I did it, it upset you. That, hey, first of all, I have a lot more gray hair now. Uh, <laughs> and I know that you did this thing and look at you. You're a preacher and you're doing it. So yeah. The, We've been wanting we've been wanting to connect with her too, by the way. So throw, I'm throwing it out there. Hey, she is available. And you think I'm gonna talk your head off. She's gonna talk your head off. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna go to you times ten. Huh? We might yeah. need to have her in person at church. If she I don't know how often she preaches, but we got yeah. a youth and young adult service that we would love hey, for her to come I to. Pass her information on and she is for it. And she going she gonna look at God working through your stupid butt. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my hero on the low. Like, I, I see her on Instagram now. That's what's yeah, up. She, she be moving. And she the only one, like I, I hear her the other day, I'm just like, she was like, How you doing? 
I was like, oh, it's the best day of my life. She just kind of looked. She was like, but is it really? <laughs> she don't want to <laughs> challenge you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Don't that's play. that's don't play. what's up. Yeah. So having some levels of anger, when, what you were sharing to me, it anger doesn't always look like a mad face. It does no, not it, always look like the punching in the walls thing, you know, those type of things, right? Or, hey. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. it look, it's that feeling you have when uh, Georgia Powell was sending the pink envelope instead of the white envelope. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or they don't send no envelope and they just touch the lights off. Like, it's so quiet in here. Why is it so quiet? <laughs> 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 right. Yeah, that but, will, will quiet you and yeah. and make you standoffish and move away and you know and people ask you all the time what's wrong what's wrong you're like nothing until it's just like Ugh. it's like where did this come from <laughs> and then i have i have something that like i don't know why but anywhere i'm at if i'm not saying nothing if i'm deep in thought i got heavy eyebrows i look i look like i'm mad people always think that i'm mad or they think i'm a muslim not to say the muslims are mad but i'm just saying <laughs> I didn't hit been hit with the Assalamu alaikum more than enough times. But I'm <laughs> Muslim. And what got me was the heavy eyebrows. <laughs> I'm, I'm just it's just the way, like if I sit here and I'm like, I have to consciously lift my eyebrows and show you yeah. about eight of my teeth every five to ten minutes. So it's not like <laughs> no, he's not asleep. I'm okay. He's engaged and he's not peed off. But I understand. So this is me utilizing my social skills. I know I look mad to yeah. some people. So, yeah. I just, I show you, want to see my teeth? Here they go. I show them to you, and then I go back into my thing. And every now and again, I'll lift my eyebrows up to show you that, hey, I'm here with you, and no, this is not, I got the ice cube syndrome. Ice cube look mad. It don't matter what's going on. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. But I am utilizing empathy. I'm aware of how I look to other people. So you just got to just be aware of that. So, but I'm angered when I see certain things. Like if I get on YouTube or World Star and I see certain things and I'm not gonna bring them up, I just be like, man, what is this? What is it? What you know what? I I bring back and it because my paradigm ha has shifted. I, what are you doing to make your circle good? What are you doing to make your neighborhood, your community, your section, your region, whatever God has given you domain over? What are you doing to to maximize that? And then so I go back to there and in my mind I can. I can say, well, if we really do this and we really do this, then it'll have an effect on everything else, if that makes mm -hmm, sense. Mm -hmm. I can look at something that's taking place in Africa and I'll feel personally responsible for it. I'll be, I'll be like mad. I'll be upset. I'm I like, do. Why? Yeah, oh. How can we fix them in Africa? <laughs> how can My we fix that? Communities are still, you know, dysfunctional. So I was like, well, just maybe something that you've done, so maybe something that somebody else did for you or through you or, mm -hmm. or how these people and they may pass the the positivity on and then it could reach those matters, but you got to just do your part so i try to use that anger as a motivation just to stay solid and not to do a whole lot of things let's just focus in on this let this be your ministry and let this yeah. guy to have in a, a positive effect on everybody that you come in contact with yeah that's awesome, awesome. You too i always like to go scripture um where it's really uh christ's second command which was to love your neighbor as you love yourself and so i always i believe that how a person loves themselves is a direct reflection of how they're going to love you and how they'll take care of you if they're not taking care of themselves it's the you know it's the same so i always try to be mindful of you know myself how i love other people by loving myself and I think that's another um, issue with people that don't love themselves. It's not even about other people. We automatically know that it's hard for people to love others. Mm -hmm. You know, that's automatic. But how do they love themselves? So do you find that people who are angry um, that you've encountered, they, they have a um, some type of underlining guilt or hatred for themselves that they don't love themselves? We uh, I do. But then also there's a thin line between anger management and uh a, a therapist mm -hmm. they're in line and what i don't do i try to stay as far away from that line as possible because i think that we all that's need almost impossible therapy. though to stay yeah. far away from that line I, it's hard it, it's hard but i never want to turn into like i had a guy who called me at 11 o'clock at night 
you were, you were in her driveway and you just got let out of jail and you crying and said, hey, listen to me. This is what I want you to understand. That if you don't get out this driveway, you're going to jail. So then it becomes a Denzel Washington situation. You want to go home or you want to go to jail. So mm-hmm. then I, once we get that parameter set up, then when you get back in the classroom or in the office setting, then I try to I take a more acute look at you and I say, hey, you know what? We may need to recommend that you go try this out because yeah. you are you have in situations where at eleven o'clock at night you're doing something else. This is for this particular population, and maybe we'll get to the point where we can we can start getting to do you love yourself. What I try to do is this. I try to illustrate to individuals that you need to have a job. You need to have a business, but you also need to have a dream. So then I try to find out, you know, what are you good at? What do you, and I, one of the questions I ask is what would you do is take money out of the equation. What would you do if you just had to get up and do something? And then a lot of times everybody's got something that they would do. So yeah. maybe we should try to find you something that you could do that you love to do and see how we can attach money to it. And that comes in the long-term case management. I'm not able to always do that within uh, if a person is sentenced to six classes. No. So, but I also understand that, you know, sometimes people got to be touched seven times. So even when you leave with your certificate of completion, I still recommend some free courses. I still have books. I still have people that you want to talk to if you want to go further with this. But I always try to encourage people to, you know, have those three things, have a job, have a business, have a dream, have something that you just want to go do. I talked to a guy, an older white guy who didn't have no teeth in his mouth, but he, su- he spoke with that Southern draw. I actually convinced him, I didn't convince him, God used me to help him understand that he could go on the stage and tell jokes. And he yeah. tried, it was, he was like, man, it was so therapeutic for him. It was just, and I'm not going to get rich off of it, but I just, I enjoyed doing it. My family liked seeing me in that light. So sometimes when you can get, and then he's going to tell somebody, then they may tell somebody and they're not going to all line up to take anger management. But the goal is to just put that idea out there because I can't, I'm not that therapist that I can break down if you love yourself or how much you love, how you work love. I, that's not what anger management does, unfortunately. But in that situation, I have to put a blanket on it and because you know, how you like to be loved, you know how you like to be treated, and you know what makes you feel good on the inside. Well, let's let's utilize a little bit more mm-hmm. of your time and push you towards those things that make you happy and that bring out the best in you. And sometimes you you'll find something that you didn't know that you like that really brings you joy. Right. Uh, and it and if it's something that's helpful to the world, that's even that's even better. So Sound like yeah. you got some life coaching in there too. I mean, it, it is it's this real thing when it look when you look at it in that way. <laughs> From your mouth to God's ear. Me and Omaha, we have a presentation for Rockdale County. We are having the chief judge magistrate. We're having the DA. It's all these people, but it's for anger management and mentoring. But what a lot of people don't understand is that I am legally able to put so much up under anger management from a legal perspective, that it's much more than that. Mm-hmm. It's much more, it's case management, it's 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 mentorship, it's, man, mo- it's, an, it's understanding, it's understanding as to what you're going through. Not everything that you're going through, but if we're talking, if you can involve poverty and uh, dysfunctional education system and parents who meant good, didn't always have it figured out, if you got any of those underlines, then we might be able to help each other out. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. We're gonna we're gonna do more about maybe ten or so more minutes, and then we'll begin to wrap up. Um, okay. But I had a question: like, if somebody that's listening on um, this video wants to kind of assess for themselves if they have issues with anger, maybe it doesn't like come out like we said earlier, like I'm mad or you know I got this built up fire. Um, maybe it comes out in other ways. Maybe I'm sarcastic or maybe I'm quiet because, you know, or maybe there's something that I just have an unresolved issue. But I know now because I'm learning more about anger management, I know now it may be anger, but I need to assess myself. Like, what would be your um, recommendations for that person? Mm, talk to somebody because a lot of times when we assess ourselves, we are biased. And unless you're able to just come in and 
critically said or just look at yourself from a critical eye, uh, chances are you may you may not need it, but I would say allow somebody else who is unbiased. Like to get your girlfriend to do it is going to be weird or to get your spouse to do it is going to be weird. You want to kind of get an outside source. That's why doing the assessment, I ask you questions. I don't know you. And what I do first, I tell you about myself and some of my mishaps. And then we go into what you've done. And then I can determine based on what you tell me because the questions I'm asking, they're going to be clean cut. It's not going to be room for for you to sauce it up or to tell me, you know, like cause sometimes like if y'all my sisters and I got this girlfriend and I come back and tell my two sisters all the bad stuff she's doing, I'm able to format how you think about this individual. Mm -hmm. So I'm placed with uh, how you view yourself. If I think that I'm right all the time, if I do an assessment, guess who's going to be right? I'm going to be right. They're going to be wrong. So a lot of times, doing this doing this assessment, I'm doing a number of things. I'm figuring out some of the things that you've done, but I'm also based on, because you're going to tell me something, and you're going to lie somewhere in there, and I'm going to ask that question three times, just so me and you get a, a basic understanding. Then I'm going to repeat it back to you. So you did this on this particular day, at this particular time, and this was the result. Of it. And then I'm going to let you see me write it down. So mm -hmm. now I want you to view me as being a certain kind of person. Cause when I come back and ask my next question, then I want you to be in line. Okay. He's not judging me, but he is taking factual statements on what's going on. So what that forces the individual or the participant to do is to operate from a different place. Sometimes if I'm doing self-assessment, I'm not going to operate from a, from a position of integrity all the time. I'm going to be biased towards myself because I'm never going to lose in, uh, now, some of us have the ability to say, you know what? I'm not right with this. I'm it's something because I have the verbal ability to I at one point in time, I lied so often and so persuasively, I had to convince myself that it was the truth. I had to take myself. I was like, hey, you know that this is a lie, right? Mm -hmm. I helped come up with this lie. We came up with this lie together. Mm -hmm. The only thing you're starting to believe the lie. It's a lie. So I'm just like, man, that is a lie. Mm -hmm. And I'm so with me now, I'm like, okay, well, I'm biased towards myself. But here's the thing about health insurance. Most of us have a lot of us have health insurance. Man, health insurance will allow me to go to therapy and I don't have to pay no extra money. So I was like, you know what? I'm paying all this money for this health insurance every Tuesday at six to seven to seven thirty. I'm on uh, Miss Mason's couch in, in, in Congress, Georgia, and I am allowing her to assess what's going on because I'm smart enough to say that, hey, even though I got this going on and I do this, that I need to pull back and look at myself and see what's going on. Not from people that I'm persuading or I'm convincing I'm a certain way. I need to come, I need to talk to somebody that they ain't going to be at my house on Thanksgiving. So they don't care. They ain't going to need to borrow no money from me. Um, yeah. They don't give me the truth about, you know, what's going on. And she never tells me certain things. She always, well, why don't you try this? And why don't you try that? And mm -hmm. it's aggressively helpful to the point where I'm, I know that I'll never stop going to therapy. I don't care how much money I get and how many people I've helped or God has helped them through me. Uh, mm -hmm. that, because I want to know why. I always have the coal in the house and then I go get four blankets. Why I do that? So now it's just like well, everything that I do, I'm like, I'll write it down. Did you find out why you do that? <laughs> why I do it? The four blankets. I don't know yet. I think it's a uh it's a self-control thing because I set the temperature to be cold, burr, but then I also went and got these blankets. So I wanna, I don't know yet. I don't know. Bit you though, Dane, and I, I might have an explanation on that. <laughs> I was just talking to somebody the other day about the seasons and how at, at the end of every season, I'm ready for the next one. I, I like all of them. To most mm -hmm. people, don't like winter because it's cold. But for myself, I love the like in the winter time. It can be 30 degrees outside. I will pull the window up to let it be freezing cold. But I will have two or three blankets, quilts, or something on top of me. It's to me, I like that type of coziness, that that type of comfort. I don't know why either, but that's 
that's how I like to get cozy. I'll go mm -hmm. and make it colder and get more blankets. <laughs> I don't know. But I also recognize my daughter. Uh, she's 13. And what has this been about a, about two years ago now that I gave her her first uh, debit card where she can, you know, spend her own money. And the mm -hmm. first card uh, on Amazon was a weighted blanket. 15 pound blanket. I went in there to go try to fix her blanket on her one night while she was sleeping so soundly. And I felt like I just tried to pick up a 40 pound dumbbell. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but she, and, hmm. Oh, no, I was getting ready to tell him if you need to turn your video off, you can. Okay. Yeah. Let me do that. Yeah. It's, we hear your voice. It's fine. Uh, let me see if I can. But uh, but yeah. So I I know with her, she likes to cuddle. She's a cuddler, and so me, I'm not a cuddler. I didn't grow up with the, you know, we didn't, we weren't very affectionate as a family. We loved each other, and we had our own familial ways to show each other that we loved each other. But you know, hugs, kisses, and cuddles, and being up under each other and stuff like that wasn't one of them. But for some reason, my daughter picked up on that, and even went through a moment where she was kind of acting out because she wasn't getting the the cuddles that she needed. And I said, let me try this. I started going to her room and like, scoot over and laying down with her. And I just saw, you know, a lot more joy coming from her. And I was like, okay, so this, this little girl needs some cuddles and stuff like that. So I don't know yeah. what the blanket is with us. <laughs> okay. So um, just two more questions. And one is going to lead into our wrap up. Um, what are some indicators that a person has dealt with their anger and have gotten better? Um, they get taken off probation and don't go back to jail. <laughs> <laughs> For starters. Uh, My office. They begin, <laughs> they begin to see change within themselves. And the biggest indicator is that they try to push that understand not push it on on somebody else but my sign when i know that a person is getting what what they're picking up what i'm putting down is when it was like yeah i told my mom with this and such and such or you'll you'll see the sparkle in their eyes when they try to tell their girlfriend or boyfriend about uh how important empathy is and how mm -hmm. it's important to have a dream and a and a job and a in a business you know, or they go get their business license or like uh the guy omar did the hispanic guy he was like without my knowledge he went and got his accreditation for anger management i almost cried that right. day. I used to be tough. i'm talking about i was tough i had to leave the office i was like give me a moment but that was an <laughs> indicator that it not only worked but he thought that it was so good that it would work with other people and that was that blessed my heart yeah yeah okay it, that well, reminds me of scripture real quick, Tangie. I'm sorry. Um, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. And I think that that scripture is an indicator that people are just hungry for knowledge. They're hungry for understanding and they're hungry for clarity and direction. And I think that, um, you know, sources such as therapy, anger management, life coaching, and so on, those are great avenues to help get those people filled. And when they, when you feed these people, so to speak, then they take that information and they feed others. Yep. And they That's enjoy. Right. <laughs> Almost like the word of God. When you catch some people and they just like, you know what, man, this was a good word. And you're like, if it made me feel this way, oh man, somebody else might. Mm -hmm. They might dust that. Uh oh, you're breaking up. Coming off that Wi Fi, probably. Mm-hmm. He'll come back in in a second. It's a great conversation. Great conversation. Yeah, it has been. It has been. And and in a minute we'll we'll get um uh, Mr. Butler's information. Um, you know, just see if anybody wanted to connect with him in any kind in any type of way. Um, but we have, you know, ways that we listed on here to how to overcome problems with anger. Um, and these are just a few that we brought up. Um, Mr. Butler may have some other ways. But it's definitely important to recognize and admit that there is an issue, um, identify the sources of the problem, and identify any other feelings associated with anger. Um, determine the best route of addressing the issue, 
practice self-care and seek, and he already mentioned this, seek professional or mature, I say mature support because it doesn't necessarily have to come in the form of a licensed therapist. Um, it may be a, a pastor or a leader. It may be a life coach. It may be uh, um, an anger management specialist, somebody that can really put you in the direction that you need to go in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know you chimed out for a minute because you probably was coming off the Wi-Fi, but um do you allow for people to contact you? And if so, how can they get in contact with you? My phone number is 770-882-3560. Again, 770-882-3560. Uh, our website is under construction. Email is very simple. It's we manage anger at yahoo.com. Or if you just have you just really got to see me, you could just go to jail. In the cab county. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you better not. You ain't gotta see me some butler that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's the information. Um, I just wanted to see Mr. Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Can you send me Mr. Butler? Please don't send me to Cab County. Send me Mr. Butler. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, that's where ninety-five percent of my clients come from. They come from the Bills Bondsmen. Uh, mm -hmm. they come from. They come from. I got a client. Monday at the the Cab County Juvenile Courthouse. So that's the unfortunate part is people don't seem to seek out these types of help that are out there until right. they've had trouble for you know whatever their antics are. But yeah, that's the unfortunate part of all this. I is people don't see the need for the life coaching, sometimes the counseling or the anger management. So we got to figure out how to get out of these eggshells <laughs> and, and help people recognize that these are things that are needed in our community and that all of us have to work together as a community through these things, through therapies and through anger managements and coaching and stuff like that in order to make our communities better. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, is there anything that we missed that you <laughs> might have wanted to share um, on this on this platform? I didn't. Uh, the only thing that I would leave uh, the listeners with is that uh, we all, to one degree, suffer with some form of of anger, and it's nothing of, to, in my perception of what anger is. It's nothing more than a lack of information, lack of exposure, uh, lack of understanding of self. Because the greatness lies within you. God already gave you that. But sometimes we go through the motions of accepting and paying attention to what people pour on us, that propaganda. We forget who we are. We forget how great God already made us. So anger management is a part of that. We're not bringing any new skill set to your portfolio. You already have that skill set. You already have that God-given gift. You have the right to, to run your own entity and not take anything uh, from people who work at Walmart, but that's somebody else's dream. You are just as important as Walmart. You have the right to, to dream, to be whatever it is that you whether it be just a, a, a tax-paying citizen or somebody who will change the world. That's you right. already got in you. We just, we've been appointed to help you pinpoint those things that God already gave you. Thank you. And you've dropped a lot of gold nuggets. I was trying to write stuff down. And, you know, even with the dream, you said three things. You need to have a job, a business, and a dream. And I went and went through my own little internal checklist. I, I would did. encourage everybody. <laughs> You did. I would encourage those in the chat, do your checklist. If you got two out of three, then begin to work on the third one. You know, if you got all three, then kudos to you. If you got one out of three, then begin to work on the other two. Um, and then just to, you know, um, I hope you guys at least wrote down the five elements um, so that we you can go back over them and do your own self-check. You know, look at those areas to say, okay, um, do I do I possess these things, these qualities? And if I don't, this is something that I possibly need to work on and do better at. Um, so I, I went from the virtual prize to the resources because I think it'd be good to do that and then we'll do the virtual prize last. But we have books for your journey, which is 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson and Norman Doid. <laughs> I don't know why they spell Dodge like that. Doid. Um, Doid. <laughs> Workbooks um, and these workbooks can email can be emailed to anybody who may be requesting them. But we have strategies for anger management and anger one on one. Um, then we have two videos we can send the links to. T D Jake's um, the fight with frustration and Pastor 
Keon Henderson, plain and simple anger management. Um, so here we go. Virtual prize. The first person to name at least one of those five elements that Mr. Butler shared will be the virtual prize one. I was, I was going to throw out all five of them, but just one out of the five would be good. And then I'm going to test Tiffany. Tiffany, so, do you know the five while they're answering? Oh, regulation, self-awareness, motivation, um, emotional um, mm -mm -mm. intelligence. I'm, I'm mm -mm. just all the statements he made. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got three out of five so far. <laughs> well, emotional intelligence is what the elements fall up under. So there's, oh, exactly. um, I think you got three or four out of five. You, empathy, that was a big one. Um, yeah. Motivation, self-awareness, social skills, and self-regulation. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any last words, Tiffany? Um, No, I just uh, want to thank Dana Butler for Good job. Day on this uh, Life on Purpose workshop for anger management did an excellent job which was our expectation anyway great expectations with you and I you know I you know encourage those that are watching to reach out to Dana and you know let's make this world a better place the gift that he's been given and that he's offering back to this world is like Tangy said there's some golden nuggets in there and you know let's get this thing called life together together Yes, yes. And also, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. If so, then just let me know and I'll do my best to cut it out. But he also has some good information that he posts every now and then on TikTok. He'll share some life stories and just some thoughtful uh, moments. So look him up on social media as well. Um, so we already shared how to get in contact with him. If you want to get in contact with Life on Purpose, here's our information on the screen. We got a website, we got Instagram, we got Facebook, and you can actually sign up for a free consultation for either life coaching services or therapy services. Um, once again, we totally appreciate our special guest that we're going to have to have back real soon. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're going to have to. We might have to bring him back with his daughter next time. <laughs> Absolutely. Both of them. Both of them. Because yeah. the little one, little one got knowledge too and experience. And I think she might have, did she write a book? She is working on a book right now. She should be working on the book. I'm not absolutely sure. Uh, okay. But I will send it her information over so you guys can get on the same page. Perfect. Appreciate that. We're going to put right. we gonna a lot of work for her now, you know? <laughs> All right. Okay, thanks for having me on, guys. All Thank right, you. have a good one. I'll do the same. All right.